I am, I have been approached about a month ago by uh, members, uh, stakeholders of the Gambia uh, Airport Association. Um, but I took my time to verify the information that was shared to me and I contacted people who should be in the know. I contacted other stakeholders and especially people at the president's office, people that had uh, uh, um, preview over some of this, um, how this business was consumed. And um, the people at the president's office believe that the president did not know. The president was um, misled. The president has been misled into this business, which I cannot guarantee. I can't guarantee that. But the facts are here. There is a company called Nero, N-I-R-O, taking over operations at the airport. Uh, at, at the airport. And um, this company, the vice president of the Gambia, Mr. Jalo, the vice president, president, vice president of the Gambia, and officers who, who, who were technocrats, of the education department. And one of them is Mr. Boy, who is now uh, the Minister for uh, Civil, uh, Civil Services. And, um, the, 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 uh, and other uh, players, which we are going to reveal subsequently in our delivery and uh, in, in our articles. Um, they are the people. They are silent partners behind this company called Nero. And the a CEO for the company, the original owner of the company is called Suleiman Cham. It's called Suleiman Cham. I don't know the Suleiman Cham in person, but he's the owner of this company called Nero. Nero was a restaurant, and um, that restaurant operated. Uh, there was a, a rest, uh, this Suleiman Cham operated a restaurant, which later turned to his uh, to be a company called Nero, at Kairaba Avenue. Now, the interesting bit I am, we are going to cover, as I said, this is just an overview. It's the corruption behind awarding this contract, which was not open for bidding. They did not tender, uh, they, there's no open bidding for this, and there's a lot of uh, lack of due process in awarding the contract and subsequently the way they play it. But they, to explain that the GC, uh, GCCA, the Gambia Civil, uh, Civil Aviation Authorities, are responsible for the administration of the airport. And obviously they give licensing to operators. And the GIA, the Gambia um, Inter International Airlines or something like that, are responsible for, were responsible for ground handling and, 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 and other services, operational services, uh, which is... Uh, the, which they used to do. And um, Nero came in as caterers. They came in for catering, which is the specialty of Nero. They were a restaurant and they were, came in for catering. They, were, they came in and got a contract for catering because there was an absence of services for uh, in, in flight catering. The company that was um, um, delivering the service was linked to the Libyan government, which was linked to Atlantic Hotel. You all know that Atlantic Hotel was doing the in-flight catering during the PPP days. And when Yaya came, Atlantic Hotel uh, ended up being owned by Libyans. And obviously the Libyans were operating and operating the in-flight um, in uh, um, services, uh, food services. But during the Samsung's these things, they, they were Samsung and they were taken off the list. And um, Nero came in and they were given this contract. But after Nero got this contract, they went further to, to get another contract which they have no specialty, they have no expertise, they have no capacity to do, which is handling the flights uh, on. We are going to go into details in this. Now, there is an issue about safety here because the experience they need, they don't have it. 
They don't have the staff that have the training, the quality of training they need to, to, to operate these machines and be uh, access to this. Thing. But there's a problem, I mean, there's an issue about security as well. There's an issue about security, there's an issue about safety. And the issue about um, secur uh, security, we will get to two parts of it. And this, the issue about security might compromise the airport operations. That further down the line, if certain things are not taken care of, it might stop some airlines, especially uh, airline service in Europe and America. It might affect their operations in the Gambia. But we'll get to that uh, in depth later. Now, the other part is there's a risk. There's a risk that this might open up to uh, uh, open up to the drug cartel for the drug trafficking. Because behind Nero, there's an unknown, an unknown investor, but who is suspected to be Egyptian. Others are saying it's a Sudan, Sudanese. An Egyptian or a Sudanese, we are to verify. That get, is an investor that is believed to be in money laundering. Money laundering, where the money is coming from, that's not established yet. But he is laundering illicit money from from deals which, which could be drugs or or, or, or or looted funds in other countries or so forth. This is the questions. But again, there is a gentleman who is Francis Mendy, called Assis, Francis Mendy Assis. If you can remember recently, there was this issue about drug intercepted in uh, or uh, uh, actually a drug syndicate uh, operating in the airport at the airport probably still and uh, the way it came about and um, the, the way they found out we the it was found out is uh, drugs were intercepted in Belgium that was coming from Gambia to SN Brussels flights and this Francis Mendy was in charge of that operation uh, was in charge of the area or services for 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 handling uh, the, the, the 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 SN Brussels flight, and he was arrested and spent a day in in the cells at the at the uh, airport, and we all know that that case was knocked off off. This Francis Mendy is instrumental, uh, playing a part in Nero helping Nero to establish. But again, the. The, the, manage, uh, the, the director general of the Civil Aviation Authority is implicated as well in facilitating, facilitating uh, Nehru to take over. Apparently because of the State House is interested. And if we say State House for now, uh, let's make it clear. I'm not accusing Adam Abaro. But we are alleging that the vice president is part of this and head of this uh, operation in Nero. And this is this will come in clear as we go into details subsequently during this uh, time of going to uh, defense segment of, of, of what these operations and how it came about. Um, the, the other interesting part is the corruption. Because when we when we go into details, uh, the Mr. Boy, Minister Boy, will find out that two of his sons are alleged to be working for Nero. Two of Mr. Boy's sons are alleged to be working for Nero. And Gambians will realize this. This is, this is they, they, are, they are in the executive, they are in positions, and their kids, that's why you don't see their kids taking the back way. They make sure they take care of their children. But the average Gambian youth will be desperate and destitute to the extent of frustrated, the lack of hope to take the back way because this is the way they do. They took over things and they control it. Uh, Mr. Boy is accused of, uh, I mean, alleged that he have two, two of his kids. But not only that. During the time of Hajj, just during the time of Hajj, just to prove that uh, the Nero did not have capacity, time of Hajj, uh, the the, this cartel, Mr. Boy and others in the cartel, took 150 million from the accounts of the teachers union. It's alleged that Mr. Boy and um, uh, the, 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 this, this, this Kabudu, the teachers Kabudu, took over 150 million 
from the teachers um, union account and lend it without interest being paid, not behind the scenes, lend it to Nero for Nero to able to service the, the, the hedge operations. For Nero to able to service the hedge operations. And um, these are allegations we've, we've received and um, these are things we're going to be looking over. Now, to my understanding, to my understanding and the people I spoke to, these are stakeholders um, in the, I mean, who have uh, um, overview, who have um, overseen authority actually, and um, from the precedence of its onwards, uh, this is our view here. That technically, what Nero is doing, or what the vice president and his kabudu are doing, is trying to take over businesses from the Gambia, um, the Gambia um, International Airlines, because there's no enough market for the oper these operations to, to, to welcome another player. There's nothing like competitiveness in this case. Um, apparently, it's less than 500,000 uh, I mean, visitors we will receive. Less than 500,000 visitors we receive. Now, the, if the conflict of interest that's been playing out, there's a conflict of interest playing out in this. If it continue and uh, the GIA has been marginalized, whilst um, Nero has been supported, GIA is subs uh, subsequently will just die off and Nero will take over. And there's a bigger uh, um, indicator to that. The GIA, the GCCA and GIA were going into partnership with, uh, with, with Ethiopian Airlines. They had a plan of strategic pl development plan, but that strategic development plan ideas were stolen from, I mean, from them because of MOKCC, the chief of staff, who is part of this group, was um, a board member who took their strategy, I mean, uh, I mean business um, um, secrets, and, and, and they used that business secret for Nero to, to operate it. Now Nero is going to represent, taking interest of to work with uh, Ethiopian Airlines, the 100 Ethiopian Airlines, partnership with Ethiopian Airlines. And GIA was looking at partnership with, with Ethiopian Airlines in order to run a flagship uh, this thing for the Gambia. But now it's going to Nero, a private entity. This is, this is what's going on. That's why I said there's so much, um, in, I mean, so much of things going on, on, on with this. That's why we want to take our time and go through it, segments. We do going to do videos, segments, different segments of it to report it. But we are going to write articles on different segments of it and, and, and place it. Today is just a given overview to put give Gambians the interest to look at this. And this is not isolated. It's not an isolated case. When we approach the president's office, people uh, uh, let me let me make this first. As we always say, when we hold government accountable, or we make allegations toward government, or, or even a ministry, we are not blaming every individual in that ministry. We are not be blaming every person, a uh, civil servant working for the government. No, because the only reason we can even get this information to, to, to work with, uh, to verify, to work with this information is because of there are good people within the system. And these people, uh, it's true those good people that came out with the, uh, this, 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 this disturbing practice. And to help to verify it, even to give us more, it's people within the system, especially at the president's office. We can't thank them more than this thing. They are doing their duty, they are whistleblowing, and they are holding, helping for us to hold the system accountable. As I said, taking over operations uh, uh, through the back way, to a corrupt way, uh, um, for a company which have no competency, we have no capacity for that matter to operate, and, and to deny the Gambian taxpayers uh, the, the benefits, um, it's a new thing. 
the ferry services there's already something going on with the ferry services with some talkies and so on again there are civil servants behind this who are benefiting and they are not working to the interests of the gambian people and there are all the contracts just as the security report we have civil servants and other politicians who who are benefiting from the security report deal but not gambia uh, gambians this this government will sell our assets this government will sell our I mean, uh, productive industries to private individuals so that they will have their kickbacks so that they can have their shares secretly and they build themselves and their families and all these entities what they do is they employ their people they employ their families and we'll get to all this to show that the government politicians and civil servants i mean are not working to our interests and this is why the things are getting difficult in that country uh, because of the few uh, one percent of that population are the one people uh, benefiting in, in, in fact businesses are struggling because of there's no um, I mean level playing field uh, I mean in the business sector these are all the problems we have and inshallah we'll come back and, and discuss this as I said guys it's just an overview um, Give us time. Tomorrow, probably we'll publish an article or we'll come back tomorrow and, and, and present the first segment and we'll go on and prove that the, uh, this allegation have substance and, 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 and there's a facts present and it's up to Gambians to take this seriously and hold this accountable and stop this, um, the, the, this company, uh, I mean, uh, picking over from a state owned company bankrupting a state-owned company and taking over for the benefit of the few and they 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 have a risk of in fact uh, uh, exposing our airport to insecurity 